Okay, um, I'm back again on the Fun Bites Bake Along 2.0 live. And uh, this is the third week. And I just can't believe we are already crossed two full weeks and then moved on to the third week. So third week when I was looking at what I have to do, it just I just didn't want to repeat what I've done. Like I don't want to do a brownie or a cookie. Then what else? Like then maybe a cake. And uh, what cake would it be? And so I was looking at adding some dried fruits and nuts and then trying to add a bit of that health factor. Obviously, so it was dates and walnuts. Um, while I'm doing the recipe, I'm also going to talk about certain variations, what you can do, what you can substitute for dates and for walnuts and any other flavor can you really add. We're also adding some lemon into it. So there is a really nice zest of the lemon that gives a beautiful citrusy flavor to the whole cake and we are using brown sugar. The recipe card is posted. One step is missed out where the soaked dates, that step is there. And to add the soaked dates um, into the batter, that one step is missing, which will be after the eggs. Okay, so that you can check out while I am making it now. And uh, I was just waiting for uh, quite a few of you to join in. So wishing you all a happy Vijaya Dasmi, happy Dasara to all of you. I'm really glad uh, to be here on this auspicious day. Last week, the same day was my birthday and, you know, uh, I was just here with all the balloons and all that. And that was again a special day. And here today on the Vijay Dasami, where, you know, you guys have to start up doing something new, new beginnings. It just marks for new beginnings, right? I'm glad I'm here again to meet you all, connect with you and bake something new. Okay, so let's get into the recipe. You can um, post in your queries. I uh, have my team, they could reply to you in the meanwhile or if there is a place where I can wait, look into the comments and then talk to you, I will also be doing that, okay? So to start with the recipe, ingredients are there on the recipe card which um, you can check out uh, the, for the measurements, they are perfect, that is given there in the recipe card. To begin with, uh, the recipe card says hot tea, right? I thought, okay, maybe if some of you are not good tea makers, then... Um, you have doubts on how do you really make the tea, hot tea. So I have the induction stove. I'm switching it on. And there is one cup of water. We are going to basically need the recipe says half a cup of hot tea, right? So I have added one cup of water. And there is also going to be some evaporation, right? Uh, when the tea is going to be boiling. And we will discard a little bit. So we will be using exact half a cup. To soak the dates and uh, say suppose you are like not a you know friend of tea if you're not a tea lover i mean don't worry your cake is definitely not going to taste tea at all we're just going to intensify the dates flavor and soak up the dates because we don't want the dates as it is to go into the batter we just want it a little more soggy to improve the dates flavor tea is added and 100 percent tea's flavor is not going to be in the final cake so go ahead if even if you're not a friend of tea go ahead and follow the step it is definitely going to be good okay so now this is two tablespoons of tea powder which i'm adding it into the water and i'm going to let this boil up after which i will sieve the tea and then i am going to add that into the dates so for the dates they are cut and pitted the seeds are removed they are seedless dates okay and uh, into that i have the zest of two lemons i i had added one lemon but i felt more citrus flavor comes from the zest of the lemon and it is really good to add a little more zest for a more citrusy flavor the lemons flavor okay so this is the zest of two lemons and then to that i'm going to add baking soda okay and uh, all of this will go together and the hot tea is also going to go into it and we need to allow that to soak for 10 minutes and uh, that we will be adding it a little while later we're just going to give it a little more time for it to soak up okay so while the tea is boiling I'm just going to add in 
lemon zest to the dates and the baking soda also goes okay that's a really nice aroma of tea you don't want to overflow don't allow it to overflow and pour out I'm just going to leave it for a few more seconds for the tea flavor to seep into the water after which then i have the sieve with me which i'm going to use to filter it out i'm also going to measure half a cup uh, and then pour only the measured hot tea into the dates lemon zest and the baking soda Just letting it boil thrice. So once done, and then the third time will be faster. Okay, so I'm just going to switch this off. Just going to keep the tea in here. I'm going to leave the induction stove down. And now I'm going to measure. Half a cup. I don't want to let it cool down because we want the hot uh, okay. So this there's little little bit there which I could use up, but this is going to be a concentrated uh, tea. If you want to add milk and then use that up. Now this I'm just going to pour it into the dates, lemon zest and the baking um, soda is there in this. I'm just going to mix it up. And this is going to need some time to soak up. Maybe you could do this step like say 15 minutes before you are going to start with the rest of the process, which is we are going to then start with uh, beating the butter, right? So now allow this to soak, set it aside. Now, to keep your dry ingredients ready will be the next step for which I have a bigger bowl. And then into the sieve, I will be adding the all-purpose flour. Salt goes in. And then baking powder. Now I'm just going to sift them together and set it aside. Now the oven is already being preheating at 160 degrees C. You can, um, depending on the size of the loaf pan, you can decide the temperature between 60 to 180. If you're making the same thing in a flat pan, which is like say maybe if it is wider, then um, you can bake it in 180. But the pan, because it has to be um, a loaf, because I'm calling it dates walnut loaf. Now I'm setting this aside, the sifted dry ingredients. Now I have a loaf pan. It's a paper mold. And uh, this is quite fine. You could pour the batter and it. You could gift it off as it is. And uh, you really don't have to butter and flour but just to be safe I have brushed it with pan release um, otherwise also in this mold the cake would come out easily not to worry um, now because this is not a very wide bottomed um, pan right and this is quite tall now the batter needs some time to rise up evenly for that reason if you are going to bake it in loaf pan then you have to bake it at 160 because you don't want to give high temperature allowing it to rise quickly and then the sides will stop baking and the center will still 
uh, keep baking and then break and crack on the top. So to avoid having cracked top, bake at 160 degrees. And it is okay if you're maybe baking that in a round 10, which is which has a broader base, then you could bake it at 180 degrees as well. I'm setting this aside. So the pan is also prepared and ready. Now, let me just get the stand mixer. And into that, I'm going to add butter. So the butter goes in. Butter is in room temperature, which means it's been taken out of fridge, um, say maybe an hour before. Butter is added and onto that, I'm going to add the powdered brown sugar because the brown sugar crystals are quite big these days. So even when the recipe calls for brown sugar, I prefer powdering it a little bit so it properly gets incorporated. You don't have to powder it too much, but powder as much that it will help creaming the butter and the sugar. This process will be really good if the brown sugar is processed a bit. I'm just going to start beating this. As the beater is going to run, it could be noisy. And I'm going to allow it to beat for three, two, four, five minutes on medium high speed until you see the mixture turns pale, creamy and light. see how the texture changes if you are using a handheld beater with a bowl or uh, even a stand mixer that does not have a silicon um, paddle attachment like the one that I have now you have to stop in between scrape down the sides and then continue beating even at the stage now though the silicon spatula is there which I wanted to keep it for the glass bowl so in the video it is see-through it is not necessary to have a um, paddle attachment with silicon spatula. You can stop in between and then scrape and then continue. You can see the colors changed and it's nice and pale now with a color that you can see on the top and this is quite uh, pale now right so this is what we are looking at and that will take as much time as it's taken here in the life and if you're using maybe a handheld beater maybe if it takes long you can continue beating to get to this consistency of the butter and the uh, powdered brown sugar together. Now into this, I'm going to add egg. And uh, every time there is a recipe with egg and there are quite a lot of egg substitutes and all that, right? So um, 
See, either I come up with a recipe with and a substitute for eggless itself. If I've tried that myself and seen the results, then I'm just going to give it to you up front. But then there are certain recipes which I can be very sure of that what I substitute would work and you could try it out and I'm very sure that it is also going to work well. So this is one such recipe. And in most of the cases, especially in cakes, if there is one egg, then you can confidently substitute with a flax meal replacement, which is for every egg, for every one egg, you take one tablespoon of the flax meal. Flax meal is powdered flax seeds and add three tablespoons of room temperature water into it. Allow it to soak for five minutes, after which process that whole thing in your small jar mixi, food processor or mixi that you call it, and use that it becomes a wobbly mixture and use that in place of one egg. Wherever there is one egg, especially when you're making cakes, you can do that. I'm looking at the comments. It's been highlighted by my team now. Which butter we should use? Any specific brand? No, I, I, I'm usually not a brand specific type of person when it comes to baking. You should be able to use the brand that is easily available to you that you can just go pick it up from your nearby supermarket. Any brand works fine. I think I'm using Delecta. If you want to know which brand I'm using because that is available in bulk for me to get from the baking supply store where I get the rest of my other ingredients as well. Can we add dates in plain water? No, you need hot water for the dates to get soaked well. Okay, so I'm going to continue adding the egg. One egg will go in. For in place of that one egg, you know what you have to do for the egg substitute. Flax meal replacement is just one word that I would like to use where you know what you have to do. A tablespoon of the flax meal to three tablespoons of water, soak it, process it and use it in place of egg when it comes to cake recipes. Now, I'm going to continue beating this say for a minute on medium high speed until the egg gets incorporated really well. So now the eggs are beaten well. I'm just scraping the sides. Okay, and now I'm going to add the dates that we had kept for soaking. So it's cooled down now. The hot tea that we poured is cooled down. I'm just going to add it in. I can just, uh, you know, um, smell through the really amazing flavor of the lemon zest that was added. And uh, I'm also going to add the lemon juice at the stage because it really adds into the uh, lemon's flavor. That's the juice of two lemon. Okay. And this I'm just going to beat. And now the flour, everything can go in. And with a little folding, we can just uh, beat it for a few seconds. This flour mixture that was sifted already, right? So it has salt and baking powder also.
So flour is gone in at this stage. Let me just beat this until incorporated only and then the walnuts has to go in. That will be the last step. I do not want the flour to just splatter out for that reason. Let me just mix it up. And once the dry and the wet combines a bit after which beating becomes a little mess free. Okay, so now it all looks combined, right? After which, just uh, need to beat for few seconds. You can see the batter is just all going to come together. So that's it. After adding the flour, you have to just stop beating it. You should not overbeat after that. I'm just going to take the bowl out and then I'm going to fold in the um, walnuts. It's going to scrape down all the batter. Okay, all the um, batter is done and let me just give it a scraping through, just go till the bottom and then I have the chopped walnuts, I'm just going to add that in and again fold. Okay, so now this has to go into the prepared pan. Now, this pan size, I'm sure this is about two inches bottom, and I think that's just seven inches. Um, you know, the length and the breadth is two by seven. This is quite um, uh, smaller for this quantity of the batter. So, I have some extra muffin pans um, which I'd used in the morning today when I just came over bake and keep it ready because once this goes into the oven I don't keep you guys waiting right so there is already a loaf that is out of the oven which I haven't unmolded yet I'm going to unmold with you now how much can you fill up to avoid the top from cracking right this much should do like every time there should be just about two thirds full not more if you fill up more, then you are going to have, it is not going to overflow, but then it is it, it could crack up and that we are just trying to avoid. Um, can I have the blue muffin um, pans there, the, the mini individual um, silicon muffin pans I have. So the remaining, I'm just going to add it into this. Again here, don't overfill. You can, if your loaf uh, pan, uh, you could use your loaf pan itself, the, you know, the metal one, doesn't matter. It works quite the same. Now, uh, if the batter fills up that um, pan, two thirds full, just go ahead and um, use that and fill it up. Okay, you have to be just sure, just because you have the batter and now if the pan is too small, now this is what you will do. Do not overfill the pan that you have. Instead, fill only two thirds of the pan. Okay, and the rest will go um, into say maybe another small paper mold or maybe um, I didn't have another smaller paper mold, you know, the round ones which are good that you can use to 
uh, fill up or maybe have another smaller uh, version of the same thing. Now, I have the, um, just giving it a little tap. Now, I have some walnuts. I couldn't find whole. Whole is good. Broken is fine as well. Then, you know, for more slices, you, you have each um, slice have one walnut. Just go ahead and decorate the top with the walnuts. You don't have to toast them, they'll get baked. Okay, so you can, you, it, it is up to you to decide if you want to add more or you can just keep it in the middle. And so this has to go into the oven to get baked at um, 160 because, because of the span that is taller and the base is not as wide. So it has to go into the oven to get baked at 160 degrees Celsius for about 25 to about 30. The, tem the timing is also for this pan. It took 30 minutes or you have to keep, a, keep for 25 minutes initially and then take it out and until a toothpick inserted into the center of the cake comes out clean. Until then, it is anyway, anywhere going to be between 25 minutes to about 30 to 32 minutes, not more than that, or you're going to have dry cake. So you have to be sure the the moment your toothpick comes out clean, you have to take it out of the oven and allow it to cool. And you, you are ready to eat it when it is warm itself. So I'm just going to put this in, send it to the oven and get the loaf that was baked today morning. I'm going to cut it out here to see how the texture has come. Thank you. So here's a loaf. It was quite warm. I want to keep it pushing till the end. I, I would have loved to have it warm, uh, but then, you know, planning and then getting ready. Um, so I thought, let me finish it off in the morning itself. So I'm just going to unmold it. Let me have the plate. And because this is this um, paper mold, which is good enough, it is just going to release itself quite easily. And just to be safe, I'm just going to use the plate. Put it back straight. Let me go ahead. I'm just going to give space for the walnuts. I'm not going to cut through the walnuts. Okay. This looks really moist and very, very soft. Let me cut through one more. Okay, so that's a really, really beautiful um, texture. Okay, it's soft and uh, stable. I'm just going to just remove a piece and also taste it with you guys. I have walnuts in every bite. I tasted this during the trial runs. And today morning as well, the um, extra muffin uh, cups, they all tasted. I really like how the um, dates is nicely incorporated throughout. You can see this entire color comes from the dates that is soaked up. The walnuts are finely chopped, so I have walnuts in every bite. And you will like it plain as it is. But then if you think, you have to add a little bit more sweetness like maybe if you are going to serve it out to kids then maybe a lemon glaze on top and if you're going to glaze it you can avoid the walnuts that's decorated on the top and uh, glaze is a bit of icing sugar sifted and lemon juice itself you don't need to add water and once you have a consistency where you can pour pour it on the top and allow it to drip to the sides 
and then when you bite through that there is going to be extra citrus burst from the lemon glaze which is nothing but icing sugar and lemon okay so i think we come to the end of the third week of one bites bake along 2.0 okay and um, okay mm. so um this loaf for the variations you could replace the dates with raisins okay and the walnuts with almonds now if you're using raisins you can avoid the tea and use hot water and soak up the raisins in hot water and um, in place of walnuts add slivered almonds or you could use regular almonds and then chop them and put it into the batter as well and instead of lemon you could do orange orange zest and orange juice but not um, the juice of um, two oranges obviously one orange would do and uh, mm, orange juice if you are using maybe a quarter cup should do fine because that is the quantity of the lemon juice that we had used now so you can obviously use any other dried fruits for that matter fig apricots raisins and different kinds of raisins that you would like to add so whatever could go into the rich fruit cake christmas cake that definitely we'll be doing it before the christmas sometime in november itself now um, to this recipe this one variation is my favorite and i would also love the ones with raisins almond and orange that replaces the dates walnuts and lemon in this recipe okay with this we come to the end of um, this uh, week for this week on third week see you guys bye